I believe that's the segue into our next fight. As I believe that is Arturo Limas coming in, getting the crowd pumped, getting Jess pumped getting a little bit. Getting me pumped, I'm dancing over here. <laughs> <laughs> like I mentioned, he has an 0-3 record. This fight scheduled to be in the bantamweight division, three rounds, five minutes. He's getting corner extrusions. It's Limas. Give him a, a little pump up slap there as he enters the cage here in Tijuana. Got a female contingent too, I hear. <laughs> the ladies, the, the ladies definitely like this yeah, one. Yeah, they do. As his opponent now is making his way to the cage. And there we see Antonio Tony Medrano from Rosarito, Baja California, Mexico, with a record of two and four. All right, excuse me, folks. This is actually Arturo Lemus stepping in the, about to step into the cage. Uh, we made a, a minor mistake here. Antonio, Tony Medrano actually was the first man to come out. As we see Arturo Limes getting Vaseline put on his face. So it's Medrano was the one that was pumped up. <laughs> the Limes uh, fan of uh, hip hop there. Lemus just gave uh, Medrano a little pat on the back. That's kind of odd. I mean, you know, it's business. Yes, it's, it's just business, that's right. Good it sportsmanship from him. So I think we got a little switch up here on our ring announcers. Oh, these shows. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. You know what? Happen. These are a lot of fun. I'm, yeah, really, I'm loving this. I'm having a good time. <laughs> Marshall's Entertainment presents La Siguiente Pelea de la Noche. Se presentan en un combate pactado a tres rounds. En la esquina azul, llegando con un peso de 62 kilos, 170 gramos, 6,270. Originario de Tijuana, Baja California, México. Antonio Tony. Llegando con un peso de 62 kilos, 120 gramos, 6, 2, 120, originario de Tijuana, Baja California, México, Arturo Lemos. Daniela Modaz, como referee de este combate, Daniela. Muad. Peleador, 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 ya saben bien sus reglas, hagan una pelea limpia. Cuando yo diga alto o stop, hay que pararse, chocan las manos a sus esquinas. Bantamweight action headed your way right now. Antonio peleador, Medrano listo. taking on peleador, Arturo listo. Limas. Listo, pelea. As we begin the action here from the auditorio Fausto Gutierrez Moreno. Kicks being exchanged by both fighters. 
front kick from Medrano. Medrano pressing, but nothing's really landing. Oh, there. Oh, he just landed nice, some leather just nice now. Nice kick to the body. Spinning back kick missed. Lee missed getting out of the way. Both fighters. Nice timing on that Gaging. takedown by Lima. Yeah, really good takedown. Lima. And be he careful gets not it. to get caught in the Yeah, right you here. never really want to have your hand on the mat. The hand needs to be fighting, excuse me, his hands need to be fighting those hands that are choking him. Let's see if Medrano's able what to put I'd away like to see him do. Yeah, he's posturing up really nicely, kind of tripoding up. He needs to put that shoulder pressure into the chest and shoulder of Medrano. See if it's a full commitment. I know that takes so much energy out of you when you're trying to squeeze. And the arm in guillotine is, is a little bit more difficult. He needs to really climb his arms up. Oh, nice to the sweep. He's still holding on to that head. That, that's not really a position that you can submit from. If, if I were him, I'd like to see him posture up and start punching and scoring. Lima's doing a good job of really holding him down onto him, though. Yeah, I see uh, the, the hand positioning there. He's trying to get the hand away from him or off of him at that area. I think Medrano still has his arm kind of locked around his head. It's hard to see from here, but it looks like Lemos is trying to, to work. No, he doesn't have anything. Well, Lemos is doing a, a good job of not have. well, he was doing a good job of keeping him close, not creating too much space for Medrano to go ahead and, and launch punches at him. Well, he's holding him down nicely. I mean, the body goes where the head goes, and if the head's down, the body stays down. However, he's not hes not scoring, and he's still in a bad position. He swings for the armbar, and then he gets passed by Madrano. Madrano now in, in a dominant position, side control. Let's see if he puts a knee on belly and attempts to mount. Now he's starting to isolate that arm of Lemos. If I were Lemos, I would really try and go out the back door try and reach for a single, try and shrimp out. He's got to create space. Rather than that, he's he's holding the Madrano down on top of him, which isn't allowing him to fr get free, and it really isn't allowing him to score. See now the knee on the belly. Attempts to throw a punch, misses the head, hits the canvas. Madrano switching off to front headlock. It looks like he's really, you know, fishing for those submissions. I think he really likes those chokes. Oh, that is a gnarly neck crank right there. So he loses it. But wisely, Lemos goes to his back. That was definitely a smart move by him. I see him trying to use the cage, but I would really like to see him start trying to create more space instead of just holding Madrano down on him. Yeah, Madrano finally getting to work on his top position. Though it hasn't been a lot of strikes from him, I'd like to see him be a little bit more active. While he is in this position, he throws a few shots at the body of Lemus. Even though he hasn't been able to strike, really, he's still in a dominant position. He's still crawling, uh, excuse me, controlling Lemus. Lemus attempting a submission, just not able to get these attempts. Honestly, Lemos has spent so much time on his back in this round. He's definitely down. I'd like to see him really create some space and start to start trying to walk back up and get to his feet and, and you know start striking again. The referee. Oh wow! Breaks him up. I don't know what I think about that. I, he was working. They, they really want to see some action here. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm saying. Both now standing and Madrano closing the space has. Demas is back against the cage. See if he will attempt a sweep or a throw to get Demas back on the ground. Attempting a head and arm throw there, wasn't he? Didn't fully get it. Both are scrambling now. Demas, just when you think he's in a good position, he loses it. No, it's just, I mean, that comes down to, to fight experience and, and time in the gym, mat time. You just really need to focus on position before submission. I, I understand the, the intensity and the excitement and wanting to finish someone. However, if you're not in a good position 
for a submission, it's not going to happen. You're going to end up on the bottom in a compromising position as we listen. We come to the end of round number one, a, a round in which Medrano almost had Lemus out due to a guillotine. Firmly wins that round number one, I feel, in the judges' scorecards. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of striking ground and pound on the ground. However, uh, Medrano definitely was controlling, pushing the pace, putting Lemos in bad positions that he had to fight out of. To the corner of Lemus. Excuse me, that's Medrano giving him advice. <laughs> I think that water was too cold for him. He spit it right <laughs> out. <laughs> As we have a replay of the action that happened from round number one, Jessica, she's here breaking the action where uh, both fighters were working. You mentioned, I guess the referee wants to see more action. Yeah, and I understand them wanting to, wanting to really press the action, however, that wasn't necessarily a position that I say that you would stand them up. They weren't stalling. They were still trying to jock for a position. Medrano, confident. The first round went his way. Has momentum coming into the second round now. And if I'm at the corner of Lemos, I would tell him, you've got to be first. You've got to put Medrano back up against the fence and really control him. Um, keep your range for striking. And if you get down on bottom again, do not spend too much time going for those submission attempts that aren't there. So we get round number two, Medrano versus Lemos. Both fighters exchanging now. Medrano lands an overhand, oh, follows it up with a kick. One by Lemos. Lemos taking the shots well as he answers back. Both fighters now in a scramble as Medrano gets a takedown, single leg. Again, Lemos is working for some sort of kind of crucifix position, but again, it puts him in a bad position. Now he's on bottom. Medrano has knee on belly and is gonna start trying to get that arm free. And once he does, he can posture up and punch and start scoring. There's a great opportunity for Lemos to get out the back, but he's holding on to these, to these submission attempts that just aren't there. Both scrambling now, Lemos getting up, but fighting off the takedown attempt of Madonna, who gets it. Though Lemos, something you. It looks like he has a. It neck, looks right? like he has a guillotine yeah. locked in. Um, however, this is he not necessarily. Yeah, this is not necessarily the position you want to be in. He yeah. wants to get into guard. Or use it to stand up and then get back into a sprawl position and ground a pound from there. But just just holding on, he cannot hold on right there. He has to transition. Yeah, or he's going to gas his arms out. Some blood coming out, I believe, from the nose or mouth of Madrano. And now Madrano finds his way back to guard. Getting his posture up. Oh, and passes right away. North-south North -south position. position yep. Lemus going through some trials here at, in this fight. Been in some really bad positions, been able to, to I mean, fight out of it. Yeah, he's in it. I just think his, his fight IQ isn't quite there. He needs a little bit more mat time, a little more experience. And again, this is how you get it, unfortunately. You get it the hard way. The hard way, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing Lima still, still wrapping up the head, trying to, trying to get a choke. Um, however, this is not one of those positions that you want to go for a choke in. Because again, down on his back, Madrano on top. I'd like to see him turn Lima's head up against the cage and start ground and pounding. He needs to get um, Lima's head, hand off of the back of his head so he can capitalize on those punches. attempting to land some strikes here in the guard of uh, Lemus. I mean, 
Lewis' guard was, was wide open right there. He can he posture up, yep. punch. As he's doing right now, he's starting to posture, but he's leaving his arm in there and giving Lemos an opportunity to submit. It's difficult to see from this angle if Lemos does in fact have it. Nope, got out of it, of the attempt, but I think that was uh, Lemos' first real attempt at a submission this round. I mean, to his credit, he's going for him, but Madrano is just seeing him coming. He's able to stack him, he's able to shake him off. Minute 25 left in round number two. Seen Limas on the defensive trying to nullify the submission attempts of Madrano's. Madrano's getting a point deducted now. What was that for? Not too sure what the point deduction was for. I didn't see a foul there, Jessica. I, I didn't see what happened either. Madrano now might have some urgency to finish the fight because of that point deduction. So it gets a hold of him, has his back now. A big slam there for Medrano. Limos back in the mat. Again, locking, locking on, holding Madrano down on top of him. This is not, this is not what you want to do in this position. You want to keep scrambling and moving. Thirty seconds left. Let's see if Madrano is able to close out the round strong. Put together some strikes here on this top position. It's been his round so far. He's landing. Elbows just moments ago. Lemus continues to, to lock him up, not allow too much space to open up between them as he gets him back in his guard. So coming to the end, round number two. I'd really like to know what that point deduction was for. Yeah, it might have been, it had to have been maybe a, an illegal strike at, at some point in there. But could I didn't see imagine, a warning yeah, at all. I could only imagine that would be the only reason as to why a uh, point deduction would occur. Liam is breathing really hard his corner, giving him a bit of air. If you take a look at the corner of Madrano, doesn't seem as fatigued as Limas, but Medrano's been the one that's been making Limas work, been the one that has been winning the rounds and, and putting the damage on Lemos. As the crowd here at the Auditorio Fausto Gutierrez Moreno giving both these Warriors big ups. <laughs> Final round here between Arturo Limos and Antonio Medrano as both fighters showing class. Spinning on the round with a jab from Limos. Front kick from Medrano. Not much mustard in either or strike. So he throws a leg kick. That was Medrano. Now coming forward. Lemus again getting pushed up to the nice back of the cage. I really want to see him go first. I know he's looking, he seems to be more of a counter puncher, but this is the round. This is when you need to go for it. This is when you need to just really be first. Lemus landed a good straight there, but. You know, he's landing, however, I'd like to see some feints. I'd like to see him set things up with a jab. He's really leading in with a... Good elbows he's, there for He's him. ducking yeah. down and then going with that overhand right. And yeah, he might be overextending really a bit happening. because he got in this position here because he over, overextended. Medrano was able to get the 
takedown there. Yeah, he's, he's throwing himself forward, he's throwing himself off balance, and that's making it really difficult to capitalize on the strike that he just landed. He's trying to scoop the knee, but Nemus getting that arm, he had the arm under there to try to stop him from scooping up the knee. I think Majano has a far side single. That's, it's gonna be difficult for him to get that one. He'd need to switch off to a double leg to get to get. That's what I was just thinking right now. Why doesn't he switch off to a double leg? Yeah, I mean, he, he may not have situational awareness right now. He may not exactly understand where there he is. There you go. A little bit better position now. Lima's on his back once more. Climbing against the cage to get some space. Try to get Medrano off of him, but Medrano back in the guard of Lemus. Medrano's working on here from the top. And again, Lemus just holding him down, and I mean, he, he got what he wanted, you know? Yeah, the referee not giving them any time as both fighters. <laughs> Hold on, I'm guys. tired. <laughs> Give me a second. This yeah, is when no. I get a little breather. <laughs> <laughs> and both men. Medrano, heavy it. strikes, but hitting air as Limos counters well. Medrano, though, is able to clinch him up. Has his back against the cage. His corner, Medrano's, that is, asking him to, to throw him, but to make sure he uh, doesn't get thrown himself here with the head and arm. He's out of it now. You have to be really careful with those throw attempts. You can put yourself into a, a bad position. You can get rolled. You can have your back taken. You have to be very, very careful. I like when people use those throws to kind of create space, to open up for strikes, to create a scramble. He followed up by an overhand from Medrano and immediately going back. And again, he keeps leg. going to that single leg. Awkward position here. Oh, he has a crucifix. Let's see if he's able to capitalize on this. This could be the moment. Oh man, this is where he's just gotta go for. for it. Isolate that arm and just start raining down elbows. Try and come up left. on top. This could be the break that Limas was looking for. Madrano flips over. Nice counter to it. Nice transition. You don't ever see transitions like that too often. Usually when they get you in that position, it's pretty uh, pretty done so at that point. It is, but I mean, that was that was a great defense to it. It's definitely like a Jeff Glover type defense. And this is where I'd like to see Mordrano just posture up and punch and, and finish strong. So in the final 30 seconds of this round, number three between Medrano and Limos. Been Lemus' best round so far. Might be a tough one to score for the judges at home. Medrano. There we go. That's what I want to see. I want to see him posture up and punch, but but he just keeps letting Lemus isolate his arm and giving him opportunity. I mean, I know he's he's confident against the submission attempts, but that just moving forward, that's some something that he's going to need to work on. Both fighters. Our guests. Both men exhausted, <laughs> laying next chilling, to each yeah, other like, just on chilling, the mat. You know. Somebody get a picture of that. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. It flips <laughs> off the camera. <laughs> Good sportsmanship being shown by both fighters as they embrace in the center of the cage. And I mean, what a battle. You know, that was a challenge for both men. They all did some good stuff. <laughs> and I love that they can just, you know, smile and shake Yeah, all smiles after.
you take a look back at the action in round number three. It's a, well, a break in the action is the end of round number three as <laughs> both fighters are Both men just each other. exhausted, embracing. They went me, through battle together. Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of like a hard training session when like it's finally over and you're just collapsed. You're like, oh God, it's done. You know, I, I love that part of training where you guys are just so physically exhausted. You guys pushed each other, you tested each other's limits. And then you can just, you know, smile and laugh. <laughs> Medrano thinks he's won. Cuts his hands in the air. Gives a thumbs up to the cameras. As we await the judge's decision here in Tijuana. Lemus looks exhausted. Being on bottom in an MMA fight can be absolutely exhausting. Um, if I if I had to choose, I would choose top position every single time. You see him acknowledge the corner of Lemus. Judge is taking a little bit longer. I always get a little uh, Worried when that happens. Well, he also had that point deduction, which that I'd still like true. to know what that was about, what the ref saw that, that we clearly couldn't see from here. Both fighters pacing around. They gotta be uh, thinking, you know, what, what's going on with uh, what the judges are coming with. It gets you a little bit worried too if uh, you think that Medrano should win this fight, but like you mentioned, Jessica with the point deduction. In that last round, you, you don't really know where it could go. And you just never know what the judges are scoring. You don't know if they're scoring submission attempts. You don't know if they're scoring top position. I believe we have a decision now in the hands of our ring announcer. Let's make it official. Let's see who won this fight. Damas y caballeros, me complace en anunciar al vencedor de este combate. Los tres jueces dieron 29 a 27. Por lo tanto, por decisión unánime, el vencedor de este combate, Antonio. Tony you see Tony Medrano who now improves his record to three and four, clawing his way back into the win column with a unanimous decision win here in Tijuana over Arturo Limas. I felt that he won the fight. We saw it was 29-27, point deduction. He won all three rounds.